What is this? It's a marble run, but it's also a computer. Right now it's adding two numbers together and in three minutes if everything works right, it should give us an answer of 1,048,574. Is this the world's largest marble computer? Does it actually work? Why does it take over three minutes to add two numbers together? And why did I build it? Did I lose my calculator? Did I drop out of school in the first grade and never learned how to add? Hmm, that's not a bad idea. Dropping out of school in the first grade would have saved me 12 years of my life. And then I could have played with rabbit tracks for eight more days than I did. Or is it 12 days? I don't know, I never learned how to add. Hi. I'm Chris. This is the story of how I spent two months designing and building a 19-bit digital edition computer that is powered by marbles. Did I mention that this marble computer fills the length of an entire room? Now what other computer does that remind you of? Hmm, I wonder. The year was 1946. Two years before Israel fulfilled 2,500-year-old biblical prophecy by becoming a nation again after living in exile for over 1,800 years. The world's first programmable general-purpose electronic digital computer had just been completed. Named ENIAC and costing $487,000, it filled an entire room measuring 15 meters by 9 meters. Sadly. This calculator from the dollar store can add larger numbers than my marble computer. And it takes up a lot less room. In September 2021, the world's largest Gravitrex marble computer was completed. Named Poindexter and costing over 3500 US dollars, it filled the length of a room measuring 6 meters. And this calculator is way faster and cheaper, a lot cheaper. What was I thinking? My quest to build marble computers began with a eureka moment when I realized that Gravitrax marble runs could be used to conceptually model how computers and chip-based electronics work on the inside, something that we call digital logic. I started a free homeschool course on YouTube where we learn digital logic by building Gravitrex marble runs together. And it's easy to understand because you can see the marbles performing the calculations. We built basic logic gates, binary counters, and even a two-bit adder that could add up to five. And I tried to keep each digital logic circuit simple enough to build at home using one or two Gravitrex starter sets. But in the back of my mind, a thought was growing an elephant in the room, a desire to build bigger and better computers. No, no, I don't want to add up to five. That's baby math. I want to add up to seven. Yeah. No, I don't want to add up to five. I want to add up to a thousand. Why stop there? I want to add up to a hundred thousand. Yep. Yep. And then I got a big idea. Why not see how far we can take this? Let's build the largest marble computer possible using all the Gravitrax pieces I own. <laughs> Igor, our plans for taking over the world must wait and clear the apple brain experiment. We need the room for Gravitrax. <laughs> so for a moment, I thought about building a 64-bit computer. You see, most of our computer processor chips today are 64-bit chips. That means on the inside, they're processing numbers that have 64 place values. I started building, but soon hit a wall, literally. Yeah, I couldn't go any further, there's a wall there. I discovered that a 64-bit computer would be about 20 meters long or 65 feet. That wouldn't fit in my house, so I settled for a 19-bit computer that is 6 meters long, almost 20 feet. And then I called it Poindexter. At least with a 19-bit computer, I can add up to one million. 
In retrospect, I am very glad I didn't try to go any larger because even with just 19 bits, it took me two months to design, build, test, redesign, rebuild, retest, redesign, rebuild, retest, redesign, rebuild, retest, redesign, rebuild, retest, redesign. Like ENIAC, which at first only worked about half the time due to burnt out radio tubes, Poindexter got off to a rocky start. Recently declassified footage shows the Gravitrax marble computer failing time and time again. Ha ha ha, what a hoot! Okay, it's September 1st. I've been working on this marble computer since August 1st for a whole month because each time I run it, it doesn't run all the way through. I've been rebuilding it and rebuilding it. I think I finally have it to where it works. So let's see. Oh no. Oh no. Got a marble in the output. Oh no. Oh no. For a long time, I couldn't get the track to run to completion. Come on, come on, you're almost there. It would always fail somewhere along the way. Sometimes a marble would fly off the track, or sometimes I accidentally brushed against a track piece and dislodged it, and didn't notice until the next run failed. This is actually a huge problem with the Gravitrax Marble Run system. Its pieces don't have a consistent friction fit, like Lego. So many times when you stack Gravitrax pieces, they are just sitting there loose waiting for the slightest jostle to send them tumbling apart. Yeah, Ravensburger missed the boat there. Great idea, not so great execution. I was beginning to think I had bitten off more than I could chew. Why was it so hard to get the marble computer to work? This marble computer is composed of over 4,100 pieces. I found that if any piece is out of place, the calculation fails producing the wrong result. All 38 switches must be in their correct starting positions. All 442 track pieces must be fully seated into tiles on both ends. All 940 tiles must be level and stable. After each run, 108 action tiles must be reset. 38 switches and 180 marbles must be placed in their correct positions. If I forget even one, the next calculation will fail. Every height tile must be in exactly the right place to allow each marble to leverage the force of gravity to travel the necessary places at the correct speeds to accurately perform the calculation. Every piece must be properly positioned, coordinated, and choreographed, and performed together just right or the calculation fails! Here's the real problem. The computer has 19 sections tied together one after another in series. So when we calculate that mathematical reliability, even if each section were 85% reliable, the entire computer would fail 19 times out of 20. I needed a design that was ultra reliable, a design that would run to completion every time. But let's say I wanted to get the entire computer up to 98% reliability, where it only fails once every 50 runs, that means each section would need to be 99.9% .9 reliable. I'm nowhere close to that. The design process took me two months while I went through a couple dozen design alterations. And each time I made a change, I had to make that change to all 19 sections. That took a while. You know, the experience really drove home to me the fact that the theory of evolution doesn't have a chance at explaining the sophisticated, choreographed machinery within living things. Every living thing on the planet, including the simplest, contains molecular machines of greater complexity than this marble computer, where if even one part is missing or out of place, it becomes non-functional. And if life doesn't function, it dies. So how could life ever evolve itself into existence over time? when even one incomplete piece kills the organism. All the pieces that are critical for the operation of the molecular machinery would need to be in place from the beginning or the organism couldn't live and if it can't live, it can't evolve. But that's a subject for another video. 
finally, I performed a no holds barred engineering failure analysis. I analyzed videos of each failure. I wrote down each failure method and tallied the number of times each failure mode occurred. Then I decided to take drastic action. Initially, I had wanted to make the marble computer really interesting and exciting. So I had two different designs of timer circuits, two different tricks to load the carry bit into the next place value, two different ways for the timer marble to trigger the next step of the addition circuit. It was just too much. Some of these methods were just more prone to failure, so I cut them out. Much of my hard work was dismantled and abandoned. The resulting marble computer would not be as varied and interesting, but at least it would work more reliably, I hoped. In the rest of the video, I'll give you a very basic overview of how the computer works, and you'll see if I finally got this marble computer working. But if this video has been informative and entertaining so far, please hit the like button. That will let me know that it was worth two months of my time building this marble computer. So here's what we're going to do. First, you're going to see the marble computer run with the maximum numbers that it can handle. This will stress test every circuit, trigger every action tile, every marble moves, every piece of track gets used, every nook and cranny had better be in tip top shape. Then we're going to have a Q&A answering your questions about Poindexter, like how many Gravitrax sets did it take to build? How long does it take to reset after running? Will it be in the Guinness Book of World Records? In my next video, to prove that I haven't hard-coded Poindexter to output predetermined answers, we're going to randomly add numbers submitted by the worldwide Gravitrax community. I've received submissions from Spain, Germany, Slovakia, the United States, Canada, Switzerland, the UK, and the Netherlands. This will be an international cooperative Marble Run event. I'm going to randomly pull these numbers out of a hat and add them together. It's going to be epic! And just so you know, one of the numbers being added has special romantic significance for a newlywed couple in Slovakia. Subscribe if you don't want to miss that calculation. And unlike ENIAC, the ENIAC computer with its fancy schmancy electrons supposedly going everywhere when you can't actually see them, you'll be able to see the marbles and Poindexter in the process of making these calculations. Yeah, that's real. That's real. Also in my next video, we'll zoom into Poindexter's inner workings, delving into the nitty gritty of how the marble computer works. I'll show you the timer circuits. I'll walk you through the operation of the adding circuits. I'll unpack how we transfer the carry bit from one place value to the next. I'll even give you Gravitrax app codes so you can build your own marble computer because there's nothing like seeing it for yourself. And I'll show you the Vortex, the vortex of, of Doom. Doom. No, seriously, I'll show you the Vortex of Doom. No big deal, it's just the Vortex of Doom. Don't you have one at your house? No? But for now, here's a basic overview of how Poindexter, the marble computer that swallowed my room, works. The adding circuits are along the bottom. They do all of the arithmetic. Boop, 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 boop. Everything up top here are timer circuits. Now these are necessary to allow each adding circuit time to finish before starting the next one. The marble computer has 19 sections placed side by side. Each section is a place value for the numbers being added. Everything that's up here is designed to put marbles on the landing pads down here to represent the answer. I've printed these cool Gravitrax inserts in my 3D printer to help us keep track of the binary place values. We have the 1's place, the 2's place, the 4's place, the 8's place, all the way up to the 19th bit, which is the 262,144's place, and then the final carry bit, which is the 524,288's place. I'm going to place one of these inserts in each landing pad, and if these numbers are confusing to you, don't worry, I'll explain it more in a moment. These inserts are available on Thingiverse for free if you want to print your own. I'll leave a link in the description. I've placed a red marble and a blue marble next to each place value on the computer. Each place value has a volcano tile that will start out empty 
and we'll transfer the red and blue marbles to the volcanoes as necessary to program the numbers that we want Poindexter to add together. The first number will be represented by red marbles placed in the upper left slots of the volcanoes, and the second number will be represented by blue marbles placed in the bottom slots of the volcanoes. The third slot remains empty and is used only if a bit is carried from the previous place value to the current place value. We'll talk more about how that works in the next video. So in theory, I should be able to load numbers into the volcanoes. Press this start button and the whole thing should run from beginning to end. Placing the output in the landing pads as a binary number. At the very end, we give the carry bit its own landing pad. The numbers are in binary form because that's what almost all computers use. And in Poindexter, we represent a one with a marble and a zero with the absence of a marble. Woo! For example, in the volcano inputs, a marble in a slot means its value is 1, and no marble in that slot means its value is 0. Then after we run the computer, a marble in the landing pad means its value is 1, and no marble means its value is 0. You know how binary numbers work, right? You don't? Well, you're not going to understand hide nor hair of this computer's calculations unless you know binary numbers. Buy hairy numbers? Why would we want to buy some hairy numbers? I don't even like the clean shaven ones. Tell you what, we're going to go ahead and run the marble computer now. But in the next video, I'll give you the world's easiest lesson on binary numbers, okay? Oh look, there's Big Brother checking our facts again. Isn't he cute? He thinks he's being helpful. I just let him think that. How did he get here on YouTube? Now during this run, we're going to add the maximum numbers that Poindexter can handle. Poindexter is a 19-bit computer. The word bit stands for binary digit. So a 19-bit computer means the computer can process 19-digit binary numbers. A 19-bit number has 19 digits and can store a value of 524,287. So the largest addition problem Poindexter can handle is 524,287 added to itself. And that's what we're gonna do right now. I have the marbles loaded. Are you ready? Okay, it's make it or break it time. It's pedal to the metal. Every volcano has both a red marble and a blue marble loaded. Let's run it.
Yes, it worked! Finally! <laughs>